everybody. I was asked to make a quick video with some suggestions about how to stay active during our quarantine. It is so important to intentionally move our bodies regardless of the quarantine, but especially at a time of such high anxiety, moving our bodies can immensely help our mental health as well. Personally, I exercise 30 to 40 minutes every day to not only get stronger, but also for the endorphins. I learned a few years ago that my mental health is vastly improved by and now pretty much relies on the flood of endorphins that I get from exercising. So here are a few ways to get yourself moving and get those endorphins flowing. The first is the simplest, and that's just to go take a walk. Yes, it's still allowed to go outside to take a walk. Just take the ne necessary precautions if you live in, a, in an apartment building or have to go into a common space before getting outside. I usually use my walk time to listen to personal development podcasts or the audiobook of my book for book club. Another simple thing you can do is to set parameters for yourself. This one's fun. For example, every time I do X, I'll do Y. Every time a commercial break comes on, I'll do crunches until the show comes back on. Every time I go to sit down, I'll do 10 squats first. Every time the top of the hour hits, I'll jog in place for a minute. And my least but most favorite, every time I open the fridge or open the snack cupboard, I will do 10 jumping jacks. These are simple but effective ways to get your heart rate up and make you aware of how many times you're aimlessly walking to the fridge. Um, also, it's a fun way to get your kids involved. Let them pick their moves and then maybe every 15 minutes of screen time, they have to do whatever move they've chosen. There are a ton of free resources available online, especially now with everybody being at home. People have put even more resources for workouts online on you can Google them or search them on YouTube. If you like to do something in particular, uh, like yoga or HIIT workouts, uh, all you have to do is type it in the search bar in Google or YouTube, and there will be plenty to choose from. And finally, here is a circuit. I call it the 54321 circuit. And it's, you'll see, it'll end up being 15 minutes long because each of those is a minute. So five minutes of five moves, one minute long each. The first, high knees. You can do them marching or running. Second, jumping jacks. We all know how to do jumping jacks. Third, front kicks. You just kick your foot out in front of you. Again, you can do it standing in place or from a running motion. Jumping jacks again for another minute and then running in place, jogging or really intensely sprinting, your choice. The four, you do each of these for one minute. You do one minute of lunges, one minute of mountain climbers, which is when you're in a plank position and you run your knees in towards your elbows. Another minute of lunges and a fourth minute, mountain climbers again. Three minutes, this one's a little different. You set a timer for three minutes. You, do, you alternate for that three minutes between two moves, 10 push-ups and 15 tricep dips, which you can do on the floor, but it's a little bit easier if you have a step or a stair on your staircase to do them on. Two minutes, each of these are done for 30 seconds. You do 30 seconds of regular squats and then 30 seconds of jump squats. And it's important to remember when you're doing a jump squat that you land softly. It helps your knees, and by that I mean you land toe ball heel and your knees bend a little bit when you land. It's easier for your knees. If you can't jump, just do another 30 seconds of regular squats. And then the third 30 seconds are regular squats again and then jumping squats to make two minutes total. The last minute is a one minute long plank, which you can do either from your hands or on your forearms. It, like I said, it's a 15 minute circuit. You can do it however many times you want, but it might take you longer than 15 minutes. I know it will take me longer than that because I'll need to take breaks in between some of the moves. Completely okay. There is no shame in taking a break or in getting water. In fact, it is encouraged. 
you can modify anything that you need to. And remember that any movement that your body does is better than no movement. But also don't be afraid to get your heart rate up while you're moving because that's the most important part. I hope that this information helps you and that you get your endorphins flowing this week. Hey everyone, this is Chef Sean at MemphisChef.com and today during this wonderful quarantine, <laughs> we're gonna take a look at some seared salmon. Got a little balsamic vinegar, green snaps that we're gonna be making as well. So here are the things you're gonna need, all right? All right, I've got everything laid out for us. What we'll need, salt of course, pepper, extra virgin olive oil, I've got red and green onions, and I've got some za'atar here, but if you don't have it, no worries. You can just use salt and pepper. And I also have some balsamic vinegar. Nothing fancy, just simple. And I also have some garlic, chives, and parsley infused butter. Now, if you've never made this, it's not a problem. If you have the individual ingredients, you can just add them in as we go along. Now, first thing we'll need to do after washing our hands, of course, is to lay out our beautiful salmon. Oh, look at that. All right, now, one thing that we want to do is we want uniform cuts. So you want to trim your salmon uh, before you start cutting along. So we'll take out the bottom part here. Take out that pesky end part. And like I said, we want to make sure that our pieces are uniform. That way, when we go and cook multiple parts of the salmon, they're cooking even, and we can also make sure that they're cooking together. All right, looks pretty good. There we go. Next part, we're going to give this just a little bit of olive oil because we're gonna end up putting a little bit of olive oil in our pan and go and spread that around on the front sides and the back. And of course, we're gonna add our salt and our pepper. All right, now, when it comes to our pan, we're wanting to make sure that when we add our salmon that it is already pretty hot. So we're gonna put it on medium to high heat and you're going to let it get hot before, of course, we add our oil and, of course, the salmon. As a matter of fact, you're going to be able to see a little bit of smoking from the pan, too. So I'm going to go ahead and add the oil. And when you're laying your salmon down, you want to make sure that you're laying it away from yourself. That way, just in case it slips out of your hand, we're not dealing with any hot oil coming and burning you in the process. looks good now like I said we we'll want to make sure that we're cooking it even so as you're cooking it you're gonna be able to see on the sides that it's going to change color while you're cooking it so that's what we're gonna look for and that's when we're gonna know that we need to turn them we're gonna go ahead and add our za'atar seasoning and a little bit of salt and pepper on the other side if it didn't make its way there already Now we're gonna add the good stuff. All right, this is our garlic, chives, and butter. I'm gonna go, and go ahead and add that right to the pan. And of course, you do wanna make sure it gets in between uh, the individual pieces. So, you know, make sure that uh, the pieces are separated and far apart enough. All right, now that I've got everything in here, the one thing with salmon is you just want to leave it alone. Don't touch it, all right? Yeah, make sure that they're far apart uh, enough from each other so they're cooking. But, you know, don't worry about flipping it. It's pretty simple. You just want to leave the salmon alone to do its thing on each side. And it typically takes about two and a half to three minutes, sometimes even three and a half.
So now that it's been about a good three and a half minutes, we're gonna wanna turn it over and we're looking for a nice crispy, if you have a skin on, uh, side, or in my case, it's just gonna be a nice sear. That's what we're looking for. Now I've got these nice tomatoes I'm gonna to add that are on the vine. I'm gonna add them right in there. Just let them soak up some of that goodness that's going on in that pan. And again, we're gonna let this side also cook for another two and a half to three and a half minutes. All right, after three and a half minutes, let's go ahead and flip. Oh man, that looks good, right? Oh, so, so good. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and transfer the salmon out. And just be careful lifting it up. And I know I don't have my fish spatula. However, if you have uh, plastic tongs, I think that'll probably serve it best. Just make sure that you're gentle when you take them out. All right, now that we've got our salmon out, we don't want to throw any of this goodness away in this pan. We're gonna use it. We're gonna cook our green bean snaps right in it as well. And we're also gonna add the rest of our onions too both the red and the green. And we're gonna put a little bit more, just a little bit of za'atar in here as well. You can also put salt and pepper if you want. I think I've got enough here in the pan, so I'm gonna to continue to use it. You just wanna make sure everything is nice and even. And I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to cover it up and just let this just cook down a little bit. Now after a while you're going to want to remove the tomato and just make sure that things are cooking just fine in the pan. Uh, toss it around a little bit or flip if you know how to do it. Nothing fancy, keep it simple. Now, as things start to cook down a little bit after about a good three or five minutes, you're also gonna to wanna to add in a little bit of water along with your balsamic vinegar dressing. Now, the dressing has a little bit of sugar to it, so on medium high heat, it's gonna to want to uh, caramelize pretty quickly. That is where the water comes in. It's gonna make sure that nothing burns in the pan. And now it's time to plate. Again, you know, let's keep it simple. You can make a beautiful plate just laying stuff down. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually put my green beans first. Just lay that down. And I'm going to add my salmon right on top of it. Again, nothing fancy. It looks fancy, but you know, it's pretty simple. And there we have it. This is our seared salmon with balsamic vinegar green snaps. Looks pretty good, right? You did a great job. Thanks again. This is Chef Sean with MemphisChef.com. You can check me out on Facebook and Instagram.